Hi, I'm Teresa Sims of Teresa Sims Personal Development Coaching and Consulting. You must forgive my scratchy throat at the moment. I have just been recovering from COVID for the last two weeks, and uh, third time is the charm, so I'm planning to never have it again. Let's see how that works. But anyway, I just wanted to talk to you today about the way things are going around the world right at the moment. And I'm not going to get into anything political or warish or anything like that, but it's the time of the year that I want to speak to you about. It's the time of year where it's Christmas coming and people are running around like crazy, shopping, trying to do this, getting everything done, working, dealing with children, dealing with friends, Christmas parties, event gatherings, you name it, they're doing it. And are they burning out at the same time? I mean, I remember those years. I remember those times. It's so hard on you, especially if you don't recoup and recover yourself well. I know I never did. It was full tilt at full run all the time until I think New Year's. I did New Year's dinner as well. So, and it was for... Christmas Day was for 26 people. There was Christmas Eve meal. There was Christmas Day breakfast that I made from scratch. Then it was, you know, 26 people for dinner. And then again, we did it for New Year's dinner. So, you know, I understand all the prestige that, no, not prestige, that's the wrong word. I understand all the logistics that go along putting together a massive meal like that. And at the time, um, I was doing most of it myself. Uh, yes, my uh, ex-husband would go collect the tables from the Knights of Columbus Hall and the chairs so that we had tables and chairs and then stand there and say, well, where do you want them? Yes. Okay. We, we sorted that out. And uh, that seemed to be the extent of his help. And uh, so there was table setting involved. There was, you know, getting everything on the table. There was the food that had to be made and, and walk through the house to our downstairs rec room where we could host 26 people at a dinner table and you know what it didn't matter because in the end it was fantastic someone didn't like this food someone didn't like that food that's okay do you know what there's other things there to eat help yourself I'm okay with that same with uh, you know having vegetarians in in the home for dinner or vegans or you know people that have different food requirements I always like to make a lot and, and enough things, variety of things, that there would be always something there for someone. And that's my plan. But, you know, we get so lost and we get so caught up in the busyness and in the hectic nature. And then we're still trying to hold a job and we're still trying to have some kind of a life. And we still have a home life that we have to keep clean and tidy and you know, organized and all this sort of thing and do laundry and buy groceries and, you know, run the kids here, run the kids there. My goodness, I no longer have children in my home. I, I have grandchildren and uh, when they come, everything here is ready, set to go. But you know what? It took me an awful long time to be able to allow myself to let my husband, my, my current husband, uh, help me in the kitchen to prepare a Christmas dinner. I did it by myself for 30, 40 years, and no way in the world was I going to let anyone else in the kitchen to help me. My God, that's my space. And you don't know what I'm doing. And you ask too many questions. I don't have time to answer questions and all that kind of stuff, you know, fun stuff. But anyway, I eventually learned. I took a step back. I took a step back from all of it. And I learned that, you know what? I'm not alone. I am not alone in this world. There are so many good, kind people that will help if you let them, if you want them. So I invited my husband into the kitchen to help me make, well, he always does it now, Thanksgiving dinner, Easter dinner, and uh, Christmas dinner. Mind you, he will help make dinner any time of the year I want, even, yeah, he's fantastic in the kitchen and can cook like anybody's business. But it was an interesting um, adventure teaching someone else my way of making and preparing Christmas dinner. My things that I've done for years, you know, were geared towards 
my other family, my, my ex-husband, my grandmother lived with us for, for 10 years. I had two boys, teenage boys that were living with us. So there was a lot of different things that I needed to learn and be exposed to. So I'm open now and I allow help. I appreciate help. I do not appreciate being told how to do something when I know it's going to work and I, I know how to do it my way. Okay, there may be a better way, but this is how I'm going to do it this time. Next time you can teach me how to do it your way. I, I think that's fair. I don't know. But uh, there are so many things that we need to prepare for one day. And there's such a lead up to it. And there is so much panic and excitement that go along with it. Excitement is good. Panic, not so good. But if you can keep yourself calm, keep yourself in a good place. And do you know what? Christmas will come and Christmas will go, whether or not we do it perfectly. Doing things perfect is not realistic. It's nice to have your Christmas table set perfectly with the turkey, the brown, golden brown turkey just sitting on the table waiting to be carved and waiting for the juices to run down inside and that stuffing in there and ooh, all the side dishes that go along with it. But you know what? It will happen whether we go off the charts crazy to do it or we step back enjoy the process of what we're creating and who we're creating it for and why we're creating this massive meal. Keep that in mind. Also, I think that, you know, at this time of year, people are also struggling with just Christmas. It represents a time that is so challenging and so difficult that some people wish it would just go away, not even exist. It's too much. And I understand those feelings because I had those feelings and I still do at times have the feelings. I went from a home as a child who had very little. Um, I was always yelled at at Christmas time because maybe I snooped and I found something that I shouldn't have. I was a little cautious little girl. But uh, I got in trouble a lot for things like that. And it, it became to the point where I didn't want Christmas. I didn't want anything to do with it. It was not a happy time in my, my house when I was young. And when I got married and had my children, it was then that I decided I was going to make Christmas the most incredible time of the year for my boys. Yes, we, we got as much possible toys and games and clothing as we could. Uh, we were both working and we did spoil them a bit, but we, we watched what we bought, you know, and it was all useful things. And we always gave them a challenge for their mind and they, they enjoyed it. But for me, it was, okay, you're, you're up. Christmas Eve, you've, you've made dinner for Christmas Eve for six people, five people, sorry. And now you have to clean up because they were busy and they wouldn't help. So then I would start preparing um, a special treat for Christmas morning, whether that be homemade Belgian waffles with peaches or strawberries and whipped cream on, tradition, or I would do... Um, a fruit tea ring or some the cherry tea ring or something like that, or some beautiful piece of pastry that I could make that everyone could have Christmas morning and feel good about just sitting there with their, their serving and their cup of coffee or their cup of tea or their glass of orange juice. Then it became unwrapping presents time and the boys had a blast. They would go and collect everything that was theirs they would sit down and one at a time, they'd open their stuff. They would open their gifts and no matter what they got, 
or if they didn't, you know, weren't happy with it, they still came over to the person that gave them the gift, hugged them, gave them a kiss on the cheek, and said thank you. That's what it's all about. I tried so hard to make my Christmas for my children perfect. As best I could. I decorated, I baked, I cleaned, I shopped, I wrapped. Oh, the wrapping was all my responsibility as well. So that was New Year's Eve or Christmas Eve, uh, sitting there on the living room floor while the boys were in bed watching uh, White Christmas and wrapping all the Christmas presents. It took hours. And you know what? It was worth it, though because I got to see their faces the next morning. I got to see the joy and the happiness in their faces as they opened their gifts. That's what it was all about. It was the joy. It was the happiness. It was, I made someone happy in what I did for them. For a lot of us though, as time went on, my kids got older, they left. I divorced, um, had a, a couple Christmases on my own which was very interesting. And then when I remarried, we have our own new Christmas traditions, but now the boys are all gone. They don't come home for Christmas anymore. They have their own lives. And it's very, very different. I don't know what to do. I don't feel like I can even get in the mood. I don't want to be bothered with it. However, this year, I am a little bit more excited about it than I have been in past years. This year, I actually wanted to decorate the house a little bit. For the last few years, I could care less if there was a Christmas tree up in the house. It's just my husband and I for Christmas and the dog. And uh, it just didn't seem worth it because then it's an ordinary day that we're having. But when we decorate, put the tree up, put a few little ornaments up. That's a signal that something special and something precious is going to happen in our home. And that's what I have to remember. That's what I need to look at. What is it that's going to give me joy? What is it that's going to give me an uplift in spirit and motivation to get through this time of year that I find, frankly, very, very, very difficult? It's always been like that. But you know, pulling out my my hand painted Santas that I did years ago on ceramic Santas or, or clay Santas, I have a, a collection of them. So pull those out and got them standing around the house and around the little wee ceramic Christmas trees and things like that, and uh, put up um, painted cer uh, ceramic Santa faces that I made back in 1987 or something along that line. I keep all these treasures. And one day they will belong to my sons if they choose to have them. If they don't, well, then maybe their grandchildren will or their children will. But I've noticed that my mood is uplifting. I notice that I'm feeling a lot better about the upcoming Christmas season. But I want to tell you, for those of you who don't, those of you who are sliding down that slippery slope, into the black nothingness because you can't face Christmas or you feel there is nothing for you for Christmas. There is. There is always hope. Trust me. And that's one of the reasons why I went into personal development coaching. It helps people to find the joy in themselves, to find the life that they've always wanted. So you would experience change working with me. You would ex receive clarity and then you would achieve success. Whatever that success may look like, it's yours, no one else's. And I would love to help you through these trying times. It's done just like this conversation between you and I and we just talk about what's going on in your world. And with my multiple coaching certifications, timeline therapy, uh, usage, um, NLP and cognitive behavioral therapy, we together 
as discussing your situation can come up with a good plan for you to challenge yourself to get through this time and come out the other side of it happy, fulfilled, and knowing that now you're armed with tools that you can use to get through any difficult time in your life. That is my wish for you. My Christmas wish for you is that you are blessed. You find peace. You find happiness, love, and joy in your life. My name is Teresa Sims. Reach me, uh, reach out to me at Teresa at TeresaSims.com. Or you can check out my website and send me a link that way. Or send me something on Facebook. I'm there. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready to help. Get in touch with me today. God bless and Merry Christmas.